How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Johnny here. Again, taking a look at 19.3 stuff, the molecular interpretation of entropy. So our object objectives of this lesson is to explain entropy in terms of molecular motion and explain how it changes with temperature and phase changes. We also want to be able to quantitatively explain entropy in terms of possible arrangements of atoms or molecules and the Boltzmann constant. So we're going to be taking a look at this equation right now um, towards the end of the video. All right, so degrees of freedom. Basically, the more freedom the particles have, the more random it is. So, like, if we take a look at this, this is a molecule where there are three atoms bonded together, and here they're not bonded, so they're free to move about however they want, away from each other, with each other, whereas if they're bonded together, they have less uh, freedom. You can think of it that way. All right, so we're going to look at these degrees of freedom more specifically. So you can have the entire molecule moving around, known as translation. So that's one degree of freedom. It can move as a whole thing from one place to another. So the translation in a gas is greater than the translation that can occur in a liquid, which is greater than the translation that can occur in a solid. So that's part of the reason why gases have much higher entropy than solids, because they have more freedom. They can move around more. Uh, there's also vibrational motion. So we can have bonds bending, like we can have, if this is our bond, we can have the atoms bending the bond, changing that angle right there. Uh, and it can be uh, vibrating back and forth like that. Um, yeah, they can also be stretching. We can have the bond lengthening and then sh shortening um, that way. So it can vibrate by bending, stretching. So that's one, or that's another degree of freedom. And another one that we're going to talk about is rotation, rotational motion, spinning like a top. So like, say, for example, this could be spinning like that. And that would be another degree of freedom. All right. So what happens as we cool things down? How is temperature affecting entropy? Well, they stop moving around so much when we cool things down. So we got this molecule. It's vibrating. It's moving around uh, at absolute zero. There's not going to be any kinetic energy and there's not going to be any movement. So that's the third law of dynamics. I'm sorry, third law of thermodynamics. It states that any pure crystalline solid, so pure, very organized, it's not different things. It's not a mixture of pure crystalline solid. So it's going to be arranged in a regular pattern in a solid locked into place. So pure crystalline solid has an entropy of zero at absolute zero because it's not moving. Right? So it can be moving, you start cooling it down, cooling it down, cooling it down, absolute zero, there's no more movement. The entropy is going to be zero okay so let's take a look at entropy and phases so we're going to start with the solids so at zero k entropy is zero so you can see up here i have a, a graph where i have entropy and the temperature is going to be in kelvin so at zero kelvin we have zero entropy at anything above zero kelvin we're going to have entropy greater than zero Right, we're going to start heating it up. It's going to start moving around, and that's going to introduce some chaos. So as we heat it up, the entropy is going to increase. Kind of makes sense. All right, so liquids. Well, entropy jumps greatly when we go from a solid to a liquid. So if we're taking a look, hold on. We're starting off with a solid right now. Right, it looks very organized, and as we melt it, it's going to become less and less organized. So again, we started at zero, we heated it up. Once it's at its melting point, it's not going to change temperature until all of it's melted. So during this solid to liquid transition, we're going to be at the same temperature, but entropy is going to jump up, right? So it's going to jump up like that. So once we have the liquid, as we heat it up, these things are going to start to move around quicker and more. So this is going to make them behave more random. So as we heat up the liquid, it's going to become more random. Entropy is going to increase. So again, we're starting at zero. We heat up our solid until it starts melting. We stay at the same temperature. Entropy goes up a lot. We start heating up the liquid now that it's completely melted, and the entropy is going to go up again. All right, so what about gases? Well, again, there's going to be a great increase in entropy as the liquid particles move into the gas phase. So take a look. Right now, I got a sealed container, and I got some liquid particles, and they're going to evaporate into the gas phase. Now, we have a much more disordered system. So again, start at a solid at zero, heat it up till it starts melting, stays at the same temperature, jumps in entropy. Uh, 
heat up the liquid till it starts to evaporate, stays at the same temperature, jumps up in entropy again. And then as you heat up the gas particles, they can move faster and faster, and then they're going to increase in entropy as you heat them up. Right? So as gas heats up, it moves faster and more randomly. So, you know, a cool gas versus a fat or a hot gas, hot gases move faster and have a higher entropy. Entropy increases. So graphically, we start at zero at zero Kelvin. Pure crystalline solid has an entropy of zero. We heat it up till it starts to melt. Now, once it's melting, it's going to stay at the same temperature and it's going to jump up in entropy. I can't draw a straight line, apparently. Good job, Donnie. All right, so straight up for the entropy. And then once it's all liquid, as we heat it, it's going to move more and more and become more random till we hit the boiling point. At the boiling point, we're going to go from a liquid to a gas where we're going to have a big jump in entropy because gases can move around a lot more than the liquids can. And once we have all the gas, or all of it is gas, if we heat it up, it's going to start to increase in entropy again. So right down here, we have solid. Then right here, we have solid to liquid. This, we got liquid. Here, we got liquid to solid, or I'm sorry, liquid to gas. And then here, we have just the gas phase, all right? Uh, so yeah, that's what entropy is going to look like graphically as we heat things up over time. All right, so let's take a look at some scenarios. Okay, this one, we got two NaHCO3 solid, giving us Na2CO3 solid, H2O gas, and CO2 gas. What's the entropy doing here? Well, we started with two solids, and we ended up with one solid and two moles of gas. So we ended up with more gas than we started with. So if we got more gas than we started with, entropy goes up, which means that we have a positive delta S, positive change in entropy. What about this scenario? Well, I got H2O solid going to liquid. So we got solid going to a liquid, which means that entropy goes up, right? Because if you go solid to liquid, to gas, you're going to higher entropy. Another scenario, we have sodium chloride solid being dissolved in H2O, giving us sodium ions, which I could have wrote aqueous there, and chloride ions, which again, I could have wrote aqueous there too. So what's happening there? Well, we started with an organized solid, and then it broke up into its separate ions, which are now able to move around more, which is going to be more chaotic. So that means we got a positive change in entropy. It became more disordered. Another one, 2NO2 gas, giving me 2NO gas and O2 gas. Okay, all right. So here we got two gases giving me two and one gas here. So I go from two moles of gas to three moles of gas, which means that I'm going to have a positive change in entropy. Entropy is going to increase because I end up with more gases than I started with. So, kind of summarize some of this. If gases form from solids or liquids, entropy increases. If liquids or solutions are formed from solids, entropy increases. If there are more moles of gas in the products than there are in the reactants, entropy increases. Okay, so the math, everybody's favorite part. Uh, this is the equation. S, entropy is equal to K ln of W. What does that mean? Well, S is entropy. K is going to be the Boltzmann constant. It's kind of like the gas constant with gases, but it's for entropy. So it's essentially R for atoms and molecules. This is the value, 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. It's a constant. W is the number of possible arrangements. So if you want to know the entropy, uh, it's going to be S equals K ln of all of the possible arrangements. So we're not going to do really any math with this. We're not going to work with too many numbers because um, it's beyond what we're going to do here. I'm not even going to explain how they figured all this out. Boltzmann, great man, figured out a bunch of stuff that's like statistic based and we're not really a statistic based class. So, you know, it's worth the whole video on its own. We're not going to go into too much detail. What do you need to know? Well, you need to know the equation. You just need to know that this equation is out there and you need to know what the letters stand for. All right. 
it gets into statistics that we're not going to deal with. So yeah, that's all. That's it. Not a big deal. Just a little science. Learning some stuff. Hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.